up, everybody? I have no idea what episode this is. What? Uh, this is episode five or six. Let me check that. Five or six? Yeah, let's get a let's get a, a, an official check on that. Uh, and let's see. Fuck, we should have done that, I guess, before we started. But we're live, <laughs> everybody. So, What's up, America? Yeah, hell yeah. As y'all can see. We've got the upgraded video quality. The setup's a little bit different. Shout out to Lindsay behind the camera that's working that shit. She's going to be giving y'all the cool ass angles. Actually, it's episode five. Episode five. Okay, so we have a confirmation on that. We are on episode five, people. What is up, everyone? Yes. I am I am Ataraxis, and we have AKA Kid X. Yes, AKA the Kid, Kid X. X. With the good with, mission for With his merch. merch. With his merch. Hell yeah. Uh, here H-A-T-A. on episode five. My shit way too far. I was coming way too far <laughs> today. I'd be short well, out. Well, I mean, speaking of which, like, I mean, so with your songs, uh, King of 330, right? Oh, yeah. Two like, of them now. Well, yeah. Part one and part two. Like, I mean, why do you think you're the King of 330? Bro, I'm so fucking glad you asked that. <laughs> bro, because my bars be crazy. Like, nobody else got no fucking bars like me, bro. But, like, if you really, like, I know sometimes it's, like, hard to understand what I'm saying. You've got to, like, go back, listen to that shit a couple times, like, whatever the case is. But it's, like, if you really go back and analyze those bars, you'll be like, you would be like, damn. Like, I want to be, like, the rapper where it's, like, motherfucker put that shit on the first time yeah they hear something what the fuck did he say and they gotta like rewind that right hold on hold on let me listen to that again like what the fuck well i mean if if you were a a new artist like you know a new rapper like say i was a new rapper or whatever and like i paid you like you know 20k or whatever tell me how how do you get the best bars what would you say bro i mean at least how i got the best bars bro you gotta to get the best bars you have to analyze the people that have the great bars you know what i'm saying and so you take people like baby tron all these motherfuckers that just are just barring out bro they get in the studio they're just barring out just going crazy not on drugs on rapping Oh yeah, just on yeah, or or, <laughs> or both. Sometimes they go hand Man, in hand. Man, be safe out there, folks. You know? Be safe. There's yeah. a lot of dumb shit out there. You know, but you got to analyze <coughs> the people that really be like Ralphie the Plug, bro. Baby Tron, Rio, RMC, all of them just out there just barring the fuck out, just coming up with crazy ass shit that's like so like shit that you wouldn't hear like Lil Baby say or something. You mm. know what I'm saying? Or yeah. it might be a bar about like something specific, like something specifically with clothes or something specifically with drugs that only people that are kind of like connected to it can actually relate to. Yeah. Yeah, that they can relate to. So it's like Stuff like that may not always go super mainstream, but then we've seen examples of people who started out doing that that actually went mainstream, like I mean, Tron getting millions of views. So, like I mean, so who, who would you say, like, has went mainstream by doing that? So far, uh, at least what I've seen, uh, Draco the Ruler and Baby Tron. And now Draco, like, he didn't go all the way mainstream before he ended up passing away, but he was, like, he was getting millions of views, yeah. all that shit. And his shit, of course, blew up even more after he passed. But, like, Baby Tron, bro... He was on like some underground Detroit shit, and now he's out here getting millions of views, bro. Like, but like I'll talk to people nowadays, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I heard of Baby Tron," but it's like you know, if you go back two, three years, nobody, bro. Like except that area, like right. in Detroit, or you know, he's tapping in with motherfuckers in Cali. Like unless you were there, you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And I love finding like those hidden gems that are just like it's just local somewhere. Oh you know? yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, especially I mean on the rock side of things, like. It is so, like, interesting to see, like, some of these underground bands. And honestly, I would be nervous of some of these, you know, local bands that maybe have, like, you know, I don't know, 20 monthly listeners. Because, like, you know, like, the next day they might be having 600 to uh, almost 1,000 monthly listeners. And, like, oh yeah, I mean, I respect, you know, the game of it, like, honestly, because, like, you know, it is... It is cutthroat. I mean, right. it probably probably even more so in the rap industry because, like, it seems like, I don't know, like, uh, rappers have, like, this kind of, like, ego mentality. Like, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, can you kind of explain that to me? Like, why? Because, yeah. like, I remember me and you, like, had a conversation of, like, you know, on my side of things, in my experience, like, I can't talk for, you know, all around the country and shit, but, like, in yeah. Northeast Ohio and the surrounding areas, like, 
you know, all the bands are super supportive. You know, if you want to get on a show with them, like, cool, like, just let me know and shit. But, like, right, with right. rappers, why is it so, like, you know, cutthroat? Well, you know, so I think there definitely is, like, a degree of, like, people's egos that, like, actually will, like, hinder business and stuff. And I feel like that is one of the downfalls that, like, rap has is just kind of, like, the mentality of, like, the majority of people that make it up, right? And, I mean, we even see it, like, a lot of rappers that will make it, they don't want to go back and put the younger generation on or support the younger generation in, in the new wave that they're creating because they're, you know... And so then we put them in a category and we say, okay, well, you're old heads, you don't get it. You right, know what I'm saying? And right. so there's kind of, like, a divide, but it's, like, the music industry, especially in hip-hop, I feel like it would be a lot better in, like... It would really improve things, make things easier for people if the older generation and the newer generation were able to kind of come together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let the older dudes, you know, make a record label, start signing these younger guys that don't have, you know, that many opportunities or whatever. You gotta, you gotta look back and remember how hard it was for you, right? When right. you were there, you yeah. know. And it's, I feel like once you get to a certain degree of success, it's hard to like look back and be like, oh yeah, I was there once, you know, and kind of yeah. sympathize with them. So I feel like that's one thing. Another thing is I've heard a million rappers say that like, even though like, okay, you know, I just take any random rapper. They're not the best rapper, right. but they have to kind of go into things with the mentality that, okay, I am the best. I am going to fuck shit up when see, I go in here. You know? See, and I, I have that mentality, like, you know, going into live shows because mm -hmm. like, as far as like live performance, you have to have the mentality, even if, you know, you're just starting out or just like, you know, starting a rap career, or, you know, band, you have to go into a live performance like saying, hey, I'm the best rapper slash band or artist in this entire room. Yeah. And I have to prove that to the audience. Exactly. I think that's kind of like it's good to have that mentality, right? But like, like you can't I'm get it ca carried away because exactly. like I see so many I see I've seen so many bands that you know like they had this great drive but like you know their ego just kind of like it just kills them in the end. Yeah, and I mean if you already have a problem with like power tripping and shit, once you actually start getting a little bit of success and the ball starts rolling, oh, it's just it's you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, if you can't so even it's handle bad a little business. success, it's bad business. You know what I mean? Well, that's what like, it's. Yeah, that's what it's going to end up being. Ultimately, is just it's going to be your downfall. Well, I you mean, know? you know, and, and this goes with any sort of artist, like you know. People are looking for, you know, kind of a genuine artist that, you know, they can relate to. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't they might have not have the same, you know, problems or struggles, but like right. you know, they can relate to like, you know, you or whatever, you know, rapping about whatever, like, hey, yeah, like, yeah. you know, he has a good idea, you know, he's been through some shit, like I can relate to that. And I just think that's really cool as as yeah, far as yeah. being a musician, like it just brings people together. Um, okay, okay. Well, this is one thing that I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring up and get your thoughts on. Yeah. Um, so there was an I forget the exact circumstances, but Snoop Dogg was asked on somewhere. They were talking about um, revenue from streams. Yeah. And Snoop Dogg was very quick to call out, like you know, back in my day, you would sell one record, you'd get a cut of that. You know, it was a lot easier, I guess, to like make money right. off of those sales when they were mm -hmm. actually physical copies. He's saying now that everything's going digital, you're not getting paid shit, you know, what you're supposed to. He's like, he basically said, he's like, how are you out here with a billion streams but ain't got a billion dollars? That don't right. make sense. Well, I mean, if you think on like, well, I mean, I don't know if you know about this, but like um, back in the day, like, you know, everyone was kind of, you know, had that mentality like, okay, mu music is not free. Like, you're right. going to have to pay at least something but uh, this website called, I don't even know if it's a website. It's like an app or something. It's called Napster. Napster, yeah. Napster, yeah. like, basically taught an entire generation of folks, which, are, you know, are our generation, that yeah. music is, you know, free yeah. to access at any time. And, um, you know, a bunch of these record labels and shit are trying to convince, you know, trying to do everything that they can to convince the population that, uh, music is not free, mm -hmm. but you know, it's already too, it's too late. Like, yeah. And you know, 
I just I hate that. Um, well, like as far as like labels go, like you know, if I'm looking at a label, what whether or not to, you know to sign with, and it's not even like one of the big major ones, like a right. small independent. I'm looking for a label that you know is able to advance my career without screwing me over. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm fine with kicking back some of my you know revenue to the label because like you know I might not have an opportunity like that, but exactly. you know. I'm not going to be screwed financially or, you know, if they screw me as far as like, you know, okay, you're going to be doing this exorbitant schedule and be Mm -hmm. doing everything every all the time, like without any breaks. And I'm like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, speaking of that, you remember like the early days of music videos on YouTube, they were all released through Vivo. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Or whatever. Well, like, I mean, it, it was actually kind of funny because like, you know, some of these people, like some of the underground rappers, like, or rappers or bands or whatever, like, you know, even though they weren't through Vivo and Vivo wasn't even affiliated, they would still right. have the watermark of Vivo just exactly. to make it. Like, I mean, shout out to Vivo. Like, they have that much of influence that motherfuckers Man. are, you know, intentionally putting their watermark. Hey, and then, like, bro, but then eventually people just realize they're like, oh, like, instead of giving this to Vivo and having them upload it to yeah. YouTube and them taking a cut of it, I'm just going to upload it and just take all of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then all of a sudden I kind of clicked and people are like, oh, like I can do this myself. Like that was kind of like the first kind of like idea of like distro kid, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 Where right. independent artists could actually have the power now to like distribute shit uh, whenever they want on demand without yeah. being signed. You know, and these guys are kind of like, wait a minute, we don't need Vivo. Like we could just get on our laptop and just upload it. See what's yeah. interesting. See what's interesting is like back in my, uh, rapping days back in 2018, like, you know, I had fucking no idea, you know, district. Uh, so I have no idea when district kid came out, right. but like at that time I had never even heard of that. So it was like, yeah. fuck man. Like, you know, I'm just kind of stick stuck with SoundCloud. Oh yeah. 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 Bro, I used uh, my first distribution uh, platform was Amuse. Yeah, I, dude, I remember. You, you know what's crazy? You'd have to wait I re- like three weeks. Yeah, bro. I remember, bro. Like, I remember, like, you know, we would be sitting in class, like, in uh, Spanish class, like, bro. I, I failed both the years, so yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's no shame, but like, I mean, like. I, I just remember you telling me, like, bro, like, two more weeks, bro. Two more weeks. And I was like, out, man, bro. that's that's going to, like, just suck. Like, there's got to be a better way. Right, right, right. And right. then DistroKid asked themselves that, and then they made an absolute wonder of a platform for people to use. I mean, shout out to DistroKid. Shout out to DistroKid. This is yeah. not even sponsored. Like, we don't even have not any even. sponsors. They could be, though. Get at us, DistroKid. Yeah. You see, we got the high quality now. Why not fucking... Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why hit not? up AKA on Damn. Instagram. Damn. Like, come on. Show some love, bro. But they just... Uh, shout out to Distro, though, because they just... They released their app uh, that you could get on iOS now, bro. So, I've been running it up on there. So, I mean, like... Let me ask you this. I mean, this is, I mean, kind of jumping from topic to topic, but, um, so as an artist, like, do you ever see yourself signing, a, signing to like a label or whatever? Oh yeah. I d- Yeah. So, so I've kind of like, uh, I've researched, right. Different, uh, different types of record, record deals and shit. Right. And I think like if I was going to sign or do something like that, I would want to sign to a distribution deal rather mm. than a record deal. Yeah. Because then they're kind of just like pushing your release, but it's like you get to release what you want. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. There's mm. not, uh, there's not like a team. That, I mean, okay. When you take, I know I keep saying like little baby and shit, but like, you know, when you take those top rappers, right. They'll make fucking, you know, 50 songs, right, for their album. And then a team or whoever it is goes through and goes, okay, we're going to stick with this 25, throw the other 25 away. We're, we don't ever see what's crazy. See what's crazy is like, I don't understand why, you know, rappers have like a, a gajillion songs. Like, it seems yeah. like so many rappers have like so many, like, you know, like, unreleased songs and shit like exactly. like for example like um x or little peep mm-hmm. like i'm pretty sure he still has like a ton of like you know oh, yeah, unreleased yeah. shit juice world's a great example of that yeah actually. that's it yeah, yeah, yeah they said he had like when he had passed away they're like oh yeah we still got like three grand in the vault and it's like well, holy fuck three grand 
you know, but then like when it comes to like these uh, these bigger rappers and stuff that are actually like, you know, they have every single movement that they do controlled and told to them by a record label. Yeah, that's called the 360 yeah, deal. Yeah, they'll make, exactly, they'll make 50 songs, right? They'll say, okay, these are the 25 that are going on the album. We throw the rest of them away and that it's whatever, you know. So an artist, even though they have like an extensive catalog, they might have 2,000 songs drop, but it's like, oh, they really made probably like eight thousand you know what i'm saying and these are the ones you know and then you could even uh that's that's kind of the difference literally between a record deal and a distribution deal is a record deal you get more money you get more push more backing of course but at the end of the day if you make something you're like oh i really fuck with this song let's get this out if it doesn't you know go past the chain of command somebody doesn't like it it gets shut down immediately see as far as like a record deal like i would i would just want to do something where like the label helps us us helps us helps us out with like yeah. touring and shit because like right you know i feel like if we can get to the next level as far as like going out to cal i mean this is like a podcast exclusive, but uh, well, we're, we're we're talking to uh, some Florida bands, and I know you've you've kind of been in the mix of it because AK has been on our team for a couple months now. Hell so yeah, shout out to yeah, him. Yeah. But um, next year we're gonna try to uh, see about going to Florida, and um, you know, doing a like a little tour like all the way down and shit. Yep. But like taking Adaraxis International, baby. <laughs> International mm-hmm. Florida. But like <laughs> honestly, I mean going back to record labels like honestly, I would see see like if I was presenting if I was presented a record deal like, yeah. you know, I would try to, you know, see what they would do as far as like getting getting us onto shows and booking and all that stuff because yeah. like it makes my personal life so much easier because like yeah. as far as i mean i'm not complaining about it like i love what i do but like you know i'm responsible for booking all the shows and right. you know getting all the lineups secured and if i have you know even more free time in doing that mm. you know i feel like the music would be just as much better oh exactly man i mean that's the thing bro once you can like start like giving responsibilities to other people to give you more time to focus on what you're really good at right you know i feel like that is like a large percentage of the formula to like being successful see i was kind of nervous like you know branching out and having like a full team but like i kind of realized like you know you can't do everything yourself exactly you can't you know Like, I mean, for instance, for you, like, I can't, I can't be security when I'm playing. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I have to have that team. And honestly, bro, like, it's important to find, you know, four or five guys or girls or whoever it is, but like, find four or five people that you trust immensely and put them on your team and you will go places. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. As long as everybody's pulling their weight, but then you got to go through the whole, you know, that transition period of where you're like, oh, is this person good at this? No. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it's fucking a okay, you know walking oh, apart no, because no. like you know finding that team takes. I mean, it takes people's you know sometimes decades to find. You know right, what I mean? Right, like, right, right. you know, I've been blessed to have like a really good you know really good team you know supporting us and you know shout out to. Uh, Darren, uh, Frank, Robert, you know, all the people behind the scenes that you don't really see because I mean, you know, I feel like artists do this from time to time, like shout out their team, but like, it's really important to shout out the, you know, the people that are behind the camera or, you know, doing security or little stuff that you just can't do physically. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's just like, cause I shouted out Lindsay at the very beginning cause she's behind the camera. Right, right. You know, making sure this shit looks nice and crispy and all that. You know what I'm saying? We got to always continue to develop the quality and up shit. You know what I'm saying? We always oh, yeah. Gotta, we always got to beat the last piece of content that we put out or the last song or project that we got. Oh, put yeah. Got to continually, like, develop things. Um. You know? So, I mean, going back to, like, the unreleased music, like, as an artist, a.k.a. How many completed songs that are unreleased? That are unreleased. 
maybe probably a little bit over 20 that probably nobody's going to hear. I mean, a little bit under 20, probably that like that are probably never going to see the light of day. But then there are a couple that I'm just kind of like waiting on features for. There's like open verses that are just kind of collecting dust. and shit. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I can pop in. On oh, them. shit. <laughs> how, but how much know, is a feature going for? Nah, man, Adder access is free, bro. Because, mm. like, hey, you're a part of the team. So like I hey, we'll tap in and get you all featured. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, though, as far as like bands go, like I can't talk for other bands but as far as Adaraxis goes there's like maybe five to ten unreleased material oh. and they're like mostly like half songs you know what i mean uh-huh. because like i mean i don't know well like i mean here in a minute explain your process but um as far as like i i go in our band like you know for every 10 songs that i write you know, Zane and Al only see maybe one or two of them. Right, right. So, like, there's so much, like, I mean, as far as, like, un, you know, unfinished lyrics and shit like that, I have, like, oh, fuck, I have, like, 50 to, like, 100, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, like, random sure. lyrics and shit. And honestly, what I find is I feel like if you had that kind of system, it's a lot better because, you know, it goes, it's it goes... It goes through different people because, like, right. you know, I write a song and I show it to Zane and he's not cool with it. You know, maybe, you know, like, it's whatever that needs to be changed. But, yeah. like, the songs, you know, in the end, it's a lot better. You know what I mean? Right, and right. that's that's where, like, you know, as far as, like, you know, artists go, like, that's where it's really crucial to put your ego aside. Because, I mean, in that aspect, as far as, like, yeah, writing... Yeah in a band but like it's just really crucial to you know get everyone on the same page as far as things go but like i mean as a rapper like i mean i feel like for you you kind of just like uh you know record shit and or freestyle it or whatever and then you you know go back but like i mean is there any songs that you really like are like kind of weird about like releasing yeah, I mean, definitely there's some things that I would consider to maybe be a little bit too experimental. I did, I do agree with you, though, on, you know, a lot of the times artists do need to put their ego aside, you know, which is which is hard a lot of the times. Because oh, yeah. making a song is a very emotional process, you know, and the last thing you want to do if you're sitting there recording, working on this thing for two hours is at the end of it be like, oh, this is dog shit and this should never be put out. You always want to have like some feeling of like being fulfilled. I did something good. I made something worthwhile. See, I think it's crazy. Like, um, I remember like one of the first times I came over here, we did, uh, sunlight on your skin. Yeah. And like, bro, that was something that like when I was going home, I was just like, shit, bro, this is fucking nice. But like, uh, I don't know whatever happened to that project, but like, I mean, you know, I feel like those kind of interactions as far as like, you know, with is with the studio sessions, like right. those are crucial because like, and also like, you know, when I go into the studio, whether that be, you know, for rapping or, you know, with the band, like I always try to have, you know, kind of a, like a set plan, you know, of what to do because like, Here's an interesting point. Like, when we have studio time that we're booked in this, like, you know, big high-end, you know, high-profile, you know, studio, like, every minute counts. Like, right, you can't right. be dicking around. Like, I remember, like, we recorded our album, Astro Antidote. Like, this was, like, two or three years ago back, um, back in 2021. Yeah. And we spent literally, like four or five hours recording 10 songs which you know it it sounds like a long time but as far as like recording all the instrumentation recording the vocals all of that like all the overdubs like anything that you would have to do over top of that yeah that is that is just unheard of you know what i mean like i've i mean as far as like this last record zero gravity i would say we've we spent like 20 20 25 hours like just recording shit you know what i mean like right. we really took our time and i feel like that's good like in that aspect like it's really good to take your time on the studio work but like 
I mean, as a rapper, like, I feel like you feel a lot less pressure because, like, you know, as far as, like, you know, the beat goes, like, that's already handled for you. Oh, yeah, you just kind of steal like, a beat. But, like, I mean, I'm not trying to discredit, discredit rappers because, like, I feel like, you know, the vocals are, you know, one of the most important aspects to oh, a song. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, like, I mean, as far as a rapper goes, like, do you feel like it's some sort of advantage that, you know, you don't have to worry about the beat? Well, so I feel like in some aspects it could be an advantage, but at the same time it puts more pressure on you to really deliver a good vocal perf- performance because it's like that's pretty much all a rap song is. It's bars over a beat. So it's like if one of those two things suck, the song is bad. If right. two of those things suck, the song's really bad. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, yeah, it might be easier as far as like the process, yeah. like on the technical side. But there's so much focus on like, oh, I've really got to be on point when I put my vocals down. Oh, yeah, for sure. I really got to get my shit across. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But on that point, I encourage everybody to go and get your own setup, put some time in to learn a little bit of mixing. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, you go to a studio, if you record 10 songs at a studio, I mean, what? Well, let's just say that's a grand, 1200 bucks. That's a starter setup. Right. With 10 songs you recorded at the studio, less than one album, you could have your own setup with a nice-ass mic, you know what I'm saying, a computer, the software, all that. You know, so I encourage everybody to do that. And then, of course, I mean, yeah, you got to put in a little fucking labor, like learn a little bit of mixing and shit. But it's like, hey, if it's going to save you money in the long run. Right, time, right, right. You know? And honestly, like, you know, as far as that goes, like, you know, you're looking to, you know, maximize, the, you know, what you make as far as like an exactly. artist or whatever. And honestly, let me, I mean, let me uh, ask you this. Like, yeah. I mean, how much time do you really spend on, you know, mixing and mastering the vocals of your songs? Oh man, I used to, well, like my progress has been pretty cool because I used to spend like an entire week, like making one song. Damn. And now it's like I can have a song like completely cranked out, finished and mastered in like two days. I mean, I mean, is the quality like compromised as as a result of that? I don't think so, because at least like when you're staying with rap songs, yeah, you might not be doing the same style all the time, but you kind of get almost an automated process of like you already know, like, you know, the skeleton of what you need to do of everything. It's just like on this specific song, some certain things are going to need tweaked. You want this to sound a little bit different. But everything I do starts out with the same like bare bones process pretty much. So I always have a starting point. So like you have something to fall back on essentially. Yeah, yeah I always have a good starting point that's going to work with anything that I've done so far. Right. And then I just kind of tweak it to be specifically set for that song. I mean, you can't EQ all the vocals the same to match everybody it's just not gonna it's not gonna work you gotta do a lot of things that are just specific with that song um but i do i kind of i found a way to more automate the process where i'm just kind of more just i already know what i'm doing i no you're good (laughs) it's just kind of like i know what i'm doing i just kind of have to like just sit there load everything up do it you know what i'm saying and then make small tweaks from there um so like i mean would you say like well like you know, going back to, you know, mixing, mixing the, uh, my last project, Zero Gravity, like, yeah. what was that process like? Was, I mean, like, was it like the first song, like, was a disaster and then like everything else kind of sort of fell into place or like, how was that experience? Like well, mixing the rock album? I mean, I think the greatest challenge of, of that project specifically was just trying to get to more of like a, uh, kind of like a uh, common ground with me and you because I'm more like on the overproduced rap side. You're more on the like raw sounding rock side. So the real challenge was just trying to get something that like sounded good to both our ears. You See, know? what's crazy is like, you know, I feel like if we have something sort of in the middle, like right. with After Party, like I feel like the vocals were mixed perfectly. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. Like a, yeah. Mix, a mix of, you know, like pro- production on your side and the rawness like exactly. that I'm looking for. Like yeah. I feel like, well, I mean, what, were, what would you say? I mean, I don't know if you know the exact songs, but 
the songs that I feel most happy with vocally would be After Party, yeah, yeah. Last Night, which is the hip hop song, right, 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 um, and Pep Rally, which is the first song off the yeah, record. Yeah. Um, so what's your thoughts on uh, the hip hop sounding song? I like that one. I think that was probably the easiest one for me to mix just because that was more in my comfort zone and shit. You know what's crazy? You know, that's that's our most popular song off the record. Hey, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe you ought to look at those analytics and be like, hey, you know, let's start going in this direction, you know, see. See, well, like, I, I mean, I, I just was trying to see, like, you know, let me pull this up really quick. But, like, I just thought it was interesting that, the, you know, the most hip-hop, sounding song is our most like as of this recording which is uh june 12th uh last night which uh, is the song has 644 listeners which ooh. that's that's the most you know the next closest is after party with 492 but right. like i just think it's crazy that like you know even though it's a rock song like you know some of the hip-hop fans are you know are able to like relate to that and like what made you what made you find it so easy to produce as oh, far as just, that song i mean definitely just the hip-hop aspects but i mean motherfuckers love when you blend genres it's always really fun even just being in the process of like oh this is this is rock but like kind of like rock with a take of rap and well, it, you know, it's always interesting as fuck to like, you know, give the people something like that where they could really be like, oh shit, like, okay, yeah, I see the idea here. Well, I don't know if you know the exact, you know, the song, you know, all this time later, but like, I mean, do you think it was more the beat or the vocals that were more hip hop esque? I mean, I think it was, it was like probably heavy on the instrumental, but I mean, you were still able to like keep up like, you know, like a flow, you stayed in time and everything, which definitely uh, right. is never a bad thing in rap. You know, that's one of right, the things right, right. that people will actually like look for immediately. They can right. pick up on is the flow because they want to move with it. They want your voice to be right along with the beat so they can dance. And yeah. Shit, you know? And so I think that was definitely one of the things that you nailed on there. Um, but I mean, maybe that's a sign like start doing more shit like that, you know, start trying to find interesting ways to combine well, different genres. Well, I remember like, you know, I've, I've had co multiple conversations with you and like, you know, you're like, bro, like we should definitely get on some fucking pop rock type shit. You know what I mean? Like, um, so like, isn't it, I mean, what's your experience as far as that goes? Uh, bro, I don't know. I think it's, Okay, well, like, first off, I feel like between rock and rap, between both what we do, I feel like that's definitely, like, a good, like, meet right down the middle right, type right. thing, you know? And I love, like, the, the alt-rock type beats because, like, there's so much emotion in them and you can really... I just find it super easy. Like, I don't have to, like, have something written before I go into it. I can kind of just listen to it and just come up with ideas. It's really easy to just write some shit down and then I already know how to say it and then usually doesn't take me that many takes. It's just so easy to get into, you know? Like, yeah, you yeah, really yeah. vibing with that shit. Um, I think one of your... I'm pretty sure one of your, like, most popular songs is, like, a MGK type beat. Is it Ghost? <sighs> it's that one with, like... Is it the one with uh me and Kyle on the front with the $100 bill blunt? It's, uh... So your top five songs is Distorted Glass, Whiskey and Coke, which is my personal favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah. Outer Space, Racetrack, and Same Page. Was that on Spotify? Yeah. That's kind of a crazy lineup. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's crazy because I've just been looking on, on YouTube. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I well, feel like... I mean, have you been promoting your YouTube more than your uh, Spotify? Oh, yeah, definitely. My views on YouTube started picking up like a month or two ago. So, like, I've been really... And then that's when I really started getting on, like, the shorts and shit. And I'm right, like, oh, right, right. There's really views on YouTube. Like, I was... Bro, I was promoting Spotify as, like, my primary platform for so long because... Spotify at the time was like where I was making the most money. Like I saw DistroKid going up and up and up and up. And I'm right. like, oh, bet, let me go on this. You know, and that's cool. The like Spotify pays and all that. But it's like with YouTube, you can get paid off your music, but also get paid off of all the content you drop as far as shorts, long form content, yeah, music videos, anything like that. And so I just, it seems like 
a lot more functional platform that you could really do a lot more on, you know, rather than a lot of these streaming services for music. I mean, so, like, as an artist, like, I mean, so, like, well, in, in your beginning times, like, what me, what was the artist that, like, was, like, damn, bro, I maybe I should start rapping? Oh, I mean, for real, bro, it was, like, I was back in school, and I saw all, like, the older motherfuckers and shit, like, the grade above us, like, they started rapping, and then, like, I was listening to their stuff, expecting it to just, like, sound like something a high schooler would make, but then I'm, like... I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, this is actually like really good quality. Like this sounds like it was recorded in like an actual studio. And like, you couldn't yeah. tell that this is like, oh, just some random motherfucker I go to school with that I got class with. You See, know what I'm saying? I mean, so like, you know, those songs that like, you know, inspired you or whatever, yeah. like, you know, where are those artists end up, you know, all this time later. Oh, they're shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even think they rap. No, anymore. hell nah, bro. I passed up all of them. Matter of fact, she knows. I fucking showed you the other day. Motherfuckers that still hit me up on some stalking shit. Trying to get linked up on some... Cla- Damn. Like, um, bro, it's the same motherfuckers all the way back in school where I'm like, oh, can I get a feature? Let's work together. Let's do... Oh, no, nah, not right now. Not nah, just blown me off for years for a feature. And then now they're, you know, working at Taco Bell, hitting me up, talking about, oh, let's do... Like, nah, bro. <laughs> like, nah. It's too late. No, like, hell no. Like, I, I, like, I'm not going to get on my high horse here and act like I've had all this monumental success in the music industry because that's simply not the fact, but it's like, hell no. Like, I put in way too much work to be where I'm at now to even stoop down to anybody's level that's hitting me up now talking about, oh, let's, oh, yeah, nah, bro. We not unless you pay, that. unless they paying you. Hell no, nah. yeah, unless the cash app is included, we not. <laughs> like, they gonna have to send 20, 25 on cash app just for a text back for real. Oh, like, shit, bro. <laughs> just say, hey, is that what I should do? Like, he just texts me, I'll just send him, what you can send like the QR request. code or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the request. Request that shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, just 25 bucks for one text. Back. Yeah, yeah, make it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there, what I'm saying, go, bro. bro. Like, make it like two hundred dollars for a, you know, like a thirty minute conversation. Oh shit, two hundred for the FaceTime for the yeah, yeah, FaceTime. Yeah. No, make that four hundred, bro. Oh you, shit, this motherfucker seeing you on fucking your entire face, like man, you gotta add right. that. This motherfucker gotta wait till his shift at Taco Bell over to hit me up. Like, <laughs> no, that's crazy. So, bro. like, I mean, like, <laughs> so, like. I mean, well, like, who would you say is the most successful artist in our school, like, that has graduated? Me and you? <laughs> Pretty much. Like, <laughs> That's I mean, I mean, I I mean, don't forget about Rez, though. Oh, yeah, shout out to Rez. Rez, Rez well, he is, like, I'm, I'm not going to deny anything, but. Wait, like, hold on, hold on. Uh, Channel 3, turn your volume all the way up and talk into the mic and they'll be able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. The producer, the producer, the producer. Yay. All right, all right, go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. So back in high school, like even before like we were even like a thing or anything, like we were just friends and everything. Yeah, yeah. Russ, like he was a very big inspiration for you. Yeah, he was. And... Um, like, even when, like, he didn't give you, like, the collaboration or anything like that, like, he was yeah. still going out of his way to give you, like, um, advice on certain shit oh, hell yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that. So, we got to at least put some respect on his name. Oh, yeah, I no, think no, he no, for sure. It. He definitely sure. deserves his flowers. Yeah, for sure. Does Shout he still do Rest. music? So, Russ has uh, been quiet for a little bit. Not that I'm aware of. He's been, like, pretty quiet, at least for, I want to say, the last year and a half. I mm. don't know if he's worked on anything, I just but saw a I could story be wrong. Post. I just saw a story post, like, not even a week ago, and he said that he was going to have some new shit coming. The last thing I heard from him was that he was going to start, like, dropping, like, like a song a week or something, and we was all waiting for that. I really Russ hope so, dark, because, bro. I mean, like... Out of everybody in our school that, like, at least I have personally listened to, like, especially, like, Blake, for example, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Fuck not, him. like, Fuck I'm not him. gonna uh, diss him or anything like that, but, like, just wasn't my type of feel for it. But, like, Russ, on the other hand, like, I definitely think that he could go somewhere with, with where he's at, oh, no. at least. Russ, bro, Russ was fucking 
fire. Rest was one of the, like I'd be lying if I said that Rest wasn't my biggest inspirations in like starting rap and shit. Like, and that's Rest exactly was, my. I've point. been in that motherfucker's studio. Saw saw him cooking and shit. Like, no, that was yeah, that was some crazy shit for sure. And that's exactly why it would be a shame because he's put like so much time, money, effort, sweat, tears, blood, all of that. Come. And just to get <laughs> no, and, <laughs> nah, I'm just yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and just to give that up just that easily would just be a shame, in my opinion. Yeah, no, no, he's definitely mad fucking talented, bro. He's- yeah, but shout out to Russ, huge inspiration. Uh, gonna give you your flowers. Just wanted to for say sure, that. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Shout out Rest the Mess. As a matter of Woo! fact, y'all go check his shit out if y'all want to. So we're gonna find this out from Adaraxis today. So. Going back to that thing that I was talking about uh, where Snoop Dogg was uh, kind of saying that, like, the streaming services are unfair in their payouts for artists. Right. As, you know, an artist yourself that does rely on income from DistroKid to kind of, you know, fuel these tours and fuel these things that you guys want to do. Do you feel personally that uh, not necessarily DistroKid, but Spotify, because they're more the middleman, but like the Spotify, Apple Music, all these places are paying you a fair amount. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. They, I mean, they have such a skewed sense of like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I, I mean, I feel like we should be paid, you know, like we should be paid fairly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever that would be like i feel like you know like well i feel like i mean you know we can create the next biggest you know music platform for sure but like i mean i just feel like if we were to create like you know a music you know app or whatever like i feel like you know artists should be paid fairly because if they're not paid fairly like what's the entire incentive for being on your platform in the first place. You know what I mean? Exactly. So they think they could just pay everybody dog shit and everybody just right. well, take and I shut mean, the fuck up. I mean, I can't really say, you know, I can't speak on Spotify's perhaps, behalf. Sorry, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. fucking talk today. But, no, you're good. Um, like, I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm just kind of sketched out, but like, you know, 0. .05 or whatever it is for a stream. Like, man, it should be like, you know, two, three, pe- you know, five pennies for yeah. a stream. And I think Spotify is actually lower than that. I'm, I, I swear that I let's saw, look this up. Let's yeah, look yeah, this yeah. Up. Let's definitely get a fact check on there. But I swear I watched a video the other day and they're at like point zero three three, like something bro, like, that. like something crazy, like less than half a cent. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, well, uh, okay, first let's pull up the stats. So it says between zero. Not even look. Look at this. Zero point zero zero three okay. to point zero zero five. Yeah, so that's accurate. Yeah, like what the fuck? Like and those range. So some are. You know how much money they're and, probably making Spotify. So they probably are making a lot of fucking money, especially from ad revenue. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's well, okay. So Enjoy with Spotify. It's like if you get a stream from someone with a free account versus a stream from somebody with a premium account, you get paid more with the person with a premium account. Same thing with YouTube. Right. If someone you know with premium watches your share YouTube, right, whatever the fuck they call that shit, you're gonna get paid more for that view. Well, how do you know that you know? though? How do you know that? Well, YouTube. Wait, how, you mean how do I personally know? How, that yeah, how do you know that? Like, you know, well, like I mean, on on Spotify or YouTube or whatever, like. A person who pays for premium, you get paid more from. Right. So, okay. How do you know that? So, okay. So, here's the thing. All right. Let me take YouTube because this is an easy example. So, how do creators get paid on YouTube? It's when you watch their video and an ad comes up, right? And then they get right. paid because you watch that ad. Right. When you pay for a premium version of a service, you don't get ads. So you're still watching these people's videos, but you're not running up any ad revenue at all right, right. on anything they watch. So they're missing out on that. So then YouTube or Spotify, they say, okay, well, yeah, you're not going to get any ad revenue, but you shouldn't be penalized because yeah, they you'll be comp- service. Quote, unquote, compensated for this. So, amount. yes, right. So their version of giving higher compensation for no ad mm-hmm. revenue, you know, they say, okay, well, we'll pay a little bit more for this view or this stream. 
if it's a premium version of the account. You know what I'm saying? Because then your ad revenue gets completely cut out. Um, so that's kind of their version. Is it fair? No. But it's Probably. their version of what they consider to be fair. Quote, you know, unquote, to yeah. Be, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, I don't know. Is <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever done like a full investigation of like, well, sh- you know, does it pay more to have a thousand people with free accounts that generate ad revenue? Or is it better to have a thousand people with premium accounts where you get paid more per stream, but no ad revenue? I don't know yet. I think it'd be interesting once we got to that point where we were actually getting paid from like do some sort of experiment or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So if y'all want to know the answer to that, go ahead, run this shit up. You know what Um, I'm saying? Get us to 100K, whatever uh, it is. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Actually, shout out to uh, all the people that are listening to us on Spotify because um, going for a drive recently hit over 200K. Oh, no shit. Yeah, that was crazy. And Okay. And <clears throat> and the entire album, Astro Antidote, hit over 300K. Hey, well, while we're in the spirit of thanking people, thank everybody that watches this because I don't think I, I've mentioned this publicly yet, but about a week oh, and shit. a half ago, oh, shit. my YouTube channel just hit over 10.5K views. Finally, hey, you know what I'm saying. So shout out to everybody yeah. that's Hell running yeah. this shit up. Whether you're just a fan of the music, whether you're just a fan of the podcast, or you're a fan of every whatever it is, thank everybody for running this shit up. You know, because well, it's really I mean, encouraging to see this. Well, shit. it's crucial to thank people because, like, you know, you're not going to be in the position you are without support. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's why I'm open. You know. We get a lot of hate comments, especially on the podcast. And especially shit. on TikTok, bro. You know, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, motherfuckers is ruthless on TikTok. They cold as hell. But like, you know what I'm saying? If y'all got some genuine shit, you want to say, hey, talk about this. No, we want to see this go in this direction. Whatever it right, is, right. let us know so we can adapt the shit. Don't oh, just yeah. go in the comments and be like, yo, this sucks. Like, bro, that don't help nobody. And to be honest, you're just going to get a generic ass response. You can go see my print. You already know what I'm going to say. Go so like, like and subscribe. Exactly, 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 exactly. You know, so it's like, hey, if y'all got some genuine shit, hey, let's go in this direction. We want to see this. Let us know, bro, because we doing this shit. Like, we going we gonna to do this, you know. We going to talk about some shit that y'all want to yeah. hear. We going to really break shit down, get to the bottom of shit, whatever the topic is. Even reactions, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, if y'all Twitter got... Fights. Well, something else I wanted to say on this show, something else I wanted to include is oh, if shit. y'all got music videos, content of any kind. Yeah, we can react to it. Yeah, exactly. That y'all would want us to react to, whatever, get at us, send some links. Hell like, yeah. Like, we doing all that, bro, for the free ski, so, like, get at us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. Like We'll be selective in our choosing process, but nobody's asking for no money right now. Oh, no, 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 If y'all no, send something. No, 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 no. Like, we're going to be asking, like... You know, 2.2 mil, mm-hmm. like, for every, you know, like, every second. So, yeah, like, y'all be cash out hope, ready when you hit Yeah, me, like, for sure, bro. <laughs> nah, nah, but, nah. I mean, so, I mean, if you were just, so, like, let, let's say you have a time machine. Okay. And, all right, all right. and you're able to go back to any year in your life and just start over from there. Right. What would it be? 2015. Why? And you were so quick to answer that, too. Oh, because I already knew, bro. I already... Ah. Everything that I want to redo or go back and change is just all in, like, a mental list that I can access at any point yeah. in time. No, I, I think it'd be 2015, uh, honestly, because that's kind of when I started, like, getting motivated to actually start music. And I think with the knowledge that I have now, there was a lot of things that I would have went back and changed, you know, to maybe make this process... What would you say your biggest thing? I think, well, and I know I, I addressed this in one of the podcasts that, you know, I said one of the things that really, like, I think hindered my progress yeah. in the beginning was that it's like, you know, I told you, like, you know, realistically, when somebody's recording themselves, you upgrade, you slowly right. upgrade, you get better, you upgrade your equipment as you get better, like, with yourself, right? Right. And I feel like I was in my stage of, like, Apple earbuds and GarageBand for way too long, Way longer 2015 than I to 2018, have. baby. And part of that reason was because, like, I was relying heavily on Justin. Shout out 13 days in motherfucking Denver. All the boys in Denver. I got a question for you after this. Scrub. Shout out all them motherfuckers. Love y'all. 
Um, but I was kind of in my stage with that shit for way too long because I was heavily relying on Justin, aka 13 Days. I'll record that shit on some earbuds and kind of just like send that over to him and be like, yo, go ahead and mix this up. Hopefully it sound good. You know what I'm saying? Like you figure out how to do all that shit. So like, you know, he would really go in there, really be trying some shit, trying to get right. it to sound legit and all that. And like he was really, you know, doing God's work. In there, bro, because I sent him some shit ass vocals that was out of tune, all different types of shit, and somehow he still made it sound good over well, the beat. Well, know? let me ask you this: like, what would you say your oldest song is that you're like, okay, like I am really proud of that? Oh boy, see it. Okay, good questions. It is a good question, ah. and I feel like. So I feel like a lot of artists would like be able to answer that like a split second or whatever. Me, I'm kind of different, bro. Like I think part of the reason I make so many songs is because yeah. I get bored of them so quick, bro. Mm. Like that's why like I think you've done it before, but Kyle's a really good example. We'll be in the car and he'll play like one of my songs from like last year, bro. And I'll be like, like I know the song, but I'm like. I don't remember what the title is. I don't remember the cover. I'm like, yo, what's the mm, name of this song? That's not a good sign, though. And he'll do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. But it's like, bro, I get so bored of song. Like, I can't keep listening to the same shit, bro. So it's like, and you got, bro, and don't forget, like, I mix all my own shit. So I'm literally sitting there just listening to it over and over again. And then listening to it while it's unreleased, waiting to come out. And then listening right. to it again on platforms when it's already out. And it's like, I get bored of songs so fucking quick. And I think that's why I just drop so many singles. Because I'm like, no, I got to I gotta keep having some fresh shit that I could, like, listen to. And, like, yeah. really feel good about myself and stuff like that. So it's like, I'm always evolving. I'm always finding out some new shit. You know, I never want to just stagnate on the same thing. And that's like, you remember uh, the other day we were talking about kind of like the differences in our process. And, you know, you said that you were a big fan of like, you know, let me record something. And then, hey, the next day, the next week, whatever, let me come back to it, re-record some stuff. And I just told you, I'm like, bro, like that's, I mean, you know, that's never something that like I've done before. Like yeah. when I'm recording, it's like, no, I'm sitting here until this is done. And this is the final vocals that I'm working with to mix, you know, the next day. I just, to me, and maybe it's irrational. I don't know, because I think other people do the opposite and they're just fine. But like, at least with me, I just have a thing where I'm like, if I go back and I'm on, I'm just spending time on old shit. I'm like, bro, I'm wasting time, bro. I'm just wait. I could be making two other new songs. I'm just wasting time, stagnating on this old shit. See, are you are you actively writing the song while you're recording? Basically, most of the time, yes. See, and I mean, as far as the writing aspect of it, yeah, yeah, that's where you know we're the same, like. I will not like you know like let, let, I mean even today like I had an inspiration for a song and I was writing and I wrote like half of the lyrics or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you know halfway through like I was just getting distract distracted with other shit and right. I was like all right I I have to mentally focus and finish the song so like from our perspective as far as the rock industry goes like i mean i can't speak for all bands obviously but like from how i run things like you know i have to like when i get an inspiration for a song i have to write the entire song out mm. but like as far as recording it and mixing it like i can do it multiple times because I already revitalized that shit. And that's right. what was tying into like the studio time for a rock band. You have to have that shit like, you know, like you can do that with your your, your fucking eyes blindfolded and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. like you have to do that like perfect because like you don't have, you know, a ton amount of time in the studio. Exactly. Exactly. And see, it even goes back. I mean, that's why I encourage everybody, bro. Right. Get invest in your own setup you know what i'm saying and now at some point i would like to make my own studio where you know people come in and record you know and so you know me saying that is gonna like fuck me in the future if i get <laughs> everybody on the whole wave oh i'm gonna record it myself but it's like to be honest with you with no money in mind i'm not making any money off of this i'm just telling people 
as you know uh, entrepreneur as an unsigned artist yeah all these different things i'm telling you it is worth the investment just drop that thousand dollars get your initial setup and then you already have the basics you just keep improving Building certain things you and know? it won't be as painful yeah next thing you get get you an upgraded mixer i mean i can't tell you how many mixers how many mics i went like you know what i'm saying how many computers i've went through and like, i can see i can fucking you know attest firsthand bro like i remember like you know you and Lindsay like pulling up to my old crib like with the fucking microphone on my fucking bench oh my bro God. and that was so stupid looking back on that i'm like what the fuck was i thinking we're literally on okay you had like you had like what like this park bench set up in your backyard or whatever that was like right by the road and for some reason i'm like oh yeah let's just set up the mic out here and do an interview just one single mic and i'm like this is crazy like we're getting the wind noise the road noise you can't even hear sometimes it's like what the fuck was you I probably thinking, you bro? probably deleted that shit but like honestly yeah, that's so long gone yeah <laughs> i mean honestly that's probably like you know honestly like i feel like the best con- kind of content comes from those kind of low quality fucking recordings oh, honestly yeah. yeah but you always i mean you know it's like the thing that you were telling me earlier it's like bro like every week i come in this motherfucker something's new something's changed something's improved and it's like that's good oh yeah you know? oh yeah that's the type shit. of shit i want to hear that means i'm doing something right you know if every time you know, you or Kyle comes back and we're going to sit down to do some work shit, some content, whatever. Right. And this one's like, oh, you know, this is, I find this a lot better. I find this a lot easier. You know, you're really like working on stuff. And it's like, you know, that's where this whole thing comes into play. Like we gave Lindsay a workstation, you know, behind the scenes and all that. So now she's filming everything, making sure everything's good. Getting it Hell yeah. And, and also, and you know, what's, you know, crucial, like, you know, you may not have like, you know, the expertise she has, yeah. you know, and. You know, adding her into the mix, like, you know, it's able to develop the podcast and, like, more importantly, your music career even more because, you know, she has something that, you know, you know, yeah, you can you can do yourself, but like it it won't be as good. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. I mean, that's the thing. It's like going back to developing a solid team. It's right. You can't do everything yourself. You need to have, you know, solid footing, solid ground to stand on before you can really do anything else. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the most important aspects of like people ask, how do I become successful? How do I do this? It's like, well, make sure that everything you're doing in house is up to par first. Oh, honestly, you know? your entire lifestyle has to be up to yeah. par before because- we even start thinking about marketing or anything else. What do you have going on in house right now? Well, I mean, if you're starting out as an artist, like think about it this way, you know, I'm starting out. I have to make a, you know, an impact on a scene that, you know, there's already like, you know, a dozen different rock bands and a dozen different rappers, as far as your case goes, yeah, that are good, have audiences and they have motherfuckers, you know, just dedicated to them. Yeah, exactly. And you have to have this kind of, I mean, you don't have to be a dick about it, but like be kind of cutthroat mm-hmm. in the aspect of like really establishing yourself as like, hey, you know, you have to pay attention to me because I have something to say and it means something right. and it will relate to you. But how do you, I mean, how do you go about, you know, marketing yourself as a unique band in such a saturated market? You know, I think people really want to know that. Like, what's the secret? Mm, well, I mean, it, I mean, you have to come, kind of have to come up with your own method into you know, creating like, like this. you blending rap and rock into one song. And that was received very well. Right. Right. I mean, that's just one example. Yeah. Like as far as, so think about it this way, like, you know, all the, you know, gurus on YouTube and shit, like about how to get rich or whatever. Like they always say, like have multiple income streams. Yes. But like, as far as, you know, forget all of that. Like as far as like marketing, you have to have multiple streams of different ways to market your music. Right. Like right, right. whether that be online, whether that be like, you know, doing flyers or business cards. Like honestly, bro, like that is one of my cheat codes, bro. Like I have, you know, shout out to Frank, but like, you know, he's yeah. gotten me a lot of business cards and I've been able to, you know, have, 
I mean, even you've seen it one on one. Like I've been yeah. able to, you know, go up to random people. You know, thank you, uh, fucking a couple oh, yeah. brewskis. But like, yeah, yeah. I've been able shout to shout out to Frank. Shout out to <laughs> Frank. But like, I've been able to go up to a couple people and be like, hey, you know, you know, I'm in a, a- local Akron band. Would you be able to check us out? And I guarantee you, ninety nine percent of the time, most people are like, oh yeah, let me check the. Check it out. And oh, honestly, yeah, yeah. like, you know, with people with social anxiety, like, that's just a fucking, you know, out of the question. And, you know, I was, n- you know, never, like, the most, you know, confident or, sh- you know, really, like, extroverted person back well, in... A couple of brewskis helped that out. Well, they I mean... Smooth, they smoothed that right the fuck Well, out. I mean, honestly, like, you know... Th- Brewskis, yes, they do help. I can't, I can't lie on that. But like, you know, I had to be confident within myself mm-hmm. in my music because, like, think about it. Like, you know, as far as like a philosophical thing, like, you know, we don't know what happens to us after we die. We don't, we don't know. Like, you know, religion and all that shit, you know, can tell you, you know, one thing or the other. But like, us as humans will never know until we actually pass over onto the other side. So the way I see it is like I have to make every day count because if there's a scenario where, you know, there's nothing it that this is it, like it, you know, if I was if I was dead and I knew like, you know, that was it, lights out, yeah. I was like I would have been like, bro, like I have to like make every day count. You know what so, I mean? Bro. All right. So like to conclude this podcast, yeah, but one whatever. last topic, one last you. topic, but like, I mean, like what's your future plans as far as like the podcast and like cool kids media and, you know, all these different podcasts and shit. Like what's the future of that? Oh, bro. We've got hey, we've got some shit in the fucking works, bro, because so we've got we've got this show alternate realities right? right we've got the cool kids table formerly known as drinking with Kyle and it is involved i'm actually making a third show and this is going to be uh just a show where i kind of uh basically take topics and stuff that i want to talk about that like that necessarily wouldn't be great to like bring up here or with Kyle because it's kind yeah. of like shit that you guys aren't really familiar with. It's more like, well, to be quite honest, it's more like shit that I see in No Jumper, just stuff like that that I kind of want to throw my two cents into and just kind of do some reactions to just yeah. certain shit that I'm really just kind of tapped in mm-hmm. with, you know. But I mean, as far as the different podcasts go, you know, I really want this, I want this to be the cool kids' media channel, like the music show you know what i'm saying where we really break that shit down because i feel like me and you can have really productive conversations about different shit in the music industry how you should move how you shouldn't move stuff that we've noticed and on both ends of the spectrum right because i'm on rap on the rap end you're on the rock see i think that's what sets us apart that's what makes the podcast great bro. yeah because like you know I, I mean, I'm not toot my own horn. We're still like an indie rock band, but like you know, we've had success. We've you know, we've had over a thousand monthly listeners. So exactly. like, I know what it. Ha- you know, I've had mobile shows out of state that are sold out. So I know what it takes to be you know at least a decent indie rock band. And I know you, you know, you've been grinding for yeah, and five plus in, years. You know what I mean? In. You you've been tapped into mm-hmm. motherfuckers in Denver. You know, all over the place, and you know you really know what it takes to, you know, be like a successful rapper. So like, I yeah. feel like that combined really makes the podcast, oh, yeah. you know, that's I, I the feel one like, real good strength. Well, as far as podcast. like, you know, as far as like new artists go, like, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to follow every single tip that we, you know, give out because like you yeah, have to yeah. find your own way. Yeah, It's just our you know experience I mean? stuff that we've learned along well, the way so far. See you know? what I've realized is like, you know, all these different, podcasts and youtube videos and all this shit that i've watched over the years like you know i take things with a grain of salt i you know i pull things from this guy and then i watch another youtube you know and i pull things and you know i try to make something that's you know unique to me yeah and honestly you know how do you how do you become a successful artist you have to set yourself apart from the other musicians you know that you're playing with or interacting with however that works 
honestly, it's important to make sure that, you know, this is going to be something that's, you know, consistent and actually is something that's worth your while and makes your listeners, you know, actually care about your music and shit. Exactly. And I think that's why this podcast show is so beneficial is because you're getting the viewpoint of somebody that's in the rap shit and the viewpoint of somebody that's in the rock shit. And if both of us agree on the same thing, well, shit, bro. Like, then that should also <laughs> tell people like, hey, wait Hell a yeah. minute. If if people on two opposite sides of the spectrum are actually agreeing on this one certain thing, I mean, maybe let's take a closer look at it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that is one of the best strengths here. And, you know, the other thing is that's great that I have a co-host that's, you know, not in the same shit as me because it's not like I don't want somebody that's so like minded to me to where they're just sitting here just being a yes man. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, uh, and, and you know, well, I mean, if if we're going back to our teams and shit, like we yeah. can't have, you know, just a bunch of yes men because, like, mm-hmm. if you have a bunch of yes men, like you, I mean, you may have some great ideas and they may go, you know, some places, but if you have yeah, a team yeah. of yes men, you won't be sustainable in the you know the long term or the future really exactly and that's when i started seeing a future in this podcast shit is like they're privated now but like all the really i mean because i you know i think people forget sometimes that me and kyle started this podcast shit over a year ago like this was back when i was living at my old place in the other town we started in shit. august of last you year know? Yeah, it was very soon after I moved into this spot. But yeah, me and Kyle had started this shit over a year ago in the old spot. And they're privated now. But if you go back and look at those episodes, bro, I can't tell you how many times me and him got drunk on camera and then literally would fight over the stupidest shit. (laughs) And it's like, yeah, is this stupid? Like... Yeah, but it's like I don't want to have somebody on the podcast who's gonna be like, like, yes, Darren. Yeah, you're exactly right. No, no, push back on me if I says something that you feel like is stupid. Tell me I'm a fucking idiot and then tell me why. Like, like, let's really have a deep down discussion. Like, nobody's tapping into this content shit, this YouTube shit to see two people just sitting there sucking each other's dicks. Like, <laughs> nah, bro. Yeah, like, tell me exactly. what's up. Like, you got a different viewpoint because you have a different background or you think a different way cool let's put it out on the table let's present both of our arguments and then hey me and you might reach an agreement we might not but either way both of the arguments are presented to the viewer they can make up their own fucking well, mind about it and, and yeah yeah i mean i think that's really crucial like you know the uh the listener should have their own viewpoint on things exactly. because like you know some of the things that i say might not be 100 percent right Things that you say might not be 100% right. Mm -hmm. Actually, like, honestly, anybody that you listen to on, you know, the internet, take with a grain of salt. And that is the best advice I can give to you because, like, honestly, bro, like, you have to learn and you have to have the experience yourself. For rather, sure. You know what I mean? Like you can't get all your news from one source. It's the right. most critical fucking thing. Just like you were saying how I take a little from this video, a little from this video, and then you combine a whole opinion based off of, you know, information that you've gathered from multiple sources, that's gonna be more accurate than if you just watch one channel and you just develop an opinion that completely aligns with whoever runs that channel. Exactly. You know what and I'm saying? I, and it's sad because most people do that, though. Yeah, I mean, that's just the public. You know, the public's are always going to be ignorant and shit. It's just like, you know, if we can put out a little world or, I mean, a little, you know, <laughs> advice into the world, you know, I would say take whatever you see with a grain of salt. You know, you get your shit from different sources just like we do. You know what I'm saying? I don't... If I come on here and I say anything that's incorrect or wrong... It was with good intentions. You know right, 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 I right. I don't come on here. I don't blast my voice out into the internet, you know, for the mere, uh, you know, just thing of just misleading people and yeah, putting out I mean, false news. You know what I'm I saying? mean, it, it's sad because, like, you know, there's, like, corporations that want to lead people to a certain belief. Or, oh, yeah, they profit you know, off of ignorance. Right, you know right, right. But we want to inform people. We want right. to to learn together here, and really we want to dissect shit. We really want right. to get to the bottom of shit, and we want to, you know, whatever y'all want to hear about, whatever y'all want to get down with, like, hey, I mean, hit us up, bro. I mean, think about it this way. Like, you know, I'm, you know, out of the, you know, whoever listens to that, this podcast or you know the entire series like as long as i'm able to you know well we're able to impact at least one or two or even three like artists 
you know, and see them because like I've mentored, you know, different artists and shit throughout, you know, my time. Right. And I've seen artists like grow and become arguably better than we are. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, yeah. I mean, I just feel like, you know, no matter what it is, keep improving on it because you know yeah. like yeah, i facts. mean if you want people to take you seriously you have to take the steps in order to be something that is different something that is innovative and something that is meaningful for the people if you want to be taken seriously that act like you're fucking serious and let me tell you this We'll end on this note. If anybody out there that's watching this, you know what I'm saying, they feel stuck, whether they want to be an artist, a podcast, whatever the fuck it is, y'all feel stuck, y'all don't know where to go, hit us up. Cool Kids Media is Adirax. looking to add, yeah, and Adaraxis, but Cool Kids Media specifically is looking to add artists, podcasters, everything. We're, we're becoming a media company. We want to... We and we do everything in house. All the music videos you see on the channel were shot by the woman right behind that camera and edited by the person on the camera Ooh, right shit. here. You and know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people can say that. Exactly. Everything we do is in house. Everything we do is organic. If y'all want to tap in, you know, to a growing channel, have some support behind you. If you want to tap in, see what's going on. Hit us up. We'll gladly work with you, whether you want to be a podcaster, a rapper, an editor, whatever the fuck you want to do in media. Hit us up, all right? We'll find a spot for you, and y'all can make it to the top with us. 